That's how I just released a new game today. Oh, really? And what game is this? An adaptation of Borderlands. Telltale did a game about Borderlands? Yeah. <laughs> Funny. No, no, I'm serious. It's called Tales from the Borderlands. And this came out today? Yeah. The last few years have been some of Telltale's most successful. Their adaptation to the Walking Dead series proved that point and click adventure games are still very much alive. It also proved that taking away puzzles and replacing it with dialogue options and interesting characters that cause emotional heartbreak was a nice substitute. Continuing their success they build off of The Walking Dead, they attempted to make a stellar adaptation to the acclaimed comic book series Fables with The Wolf Among Us. The Wolf Among Us is so good in fact it's one of the best games of 2014. After perfecting story-driven titles that focus on drama and consequences, most of us have forgot about Telltale's comedic roots like Tales from Monkey Island and Sam and Max. Feeling like they could tackle any series ever, a very risky decision was made to create an episodic series based on the Borderland series. Today we are here to review Telltale's Tales from the Borderlands Episode 1 Zero Sum. Whew. After much speculation of pairing a story-driven gameplay style with a series with not much story in it, Tales from the Borderlands delivers an experience that's... You know what, I'll just let you know in a moment. Tales from the Borderlands takes place after the events of Borderlands 2. Handsome Jack is dead and someone needs to take his place as head of the fascist Hyperion Company. You play as two unreliable protagonists. Rise, who works at the Hyperion and dreams of running the company himself, and Fiona, the thief that's only in it for the money. You both tell the same story for different sides to an unknown third party. And story-wise, that's as much as I'm letting out. Now for a series that isn't really known for a decent story, Telltale managed to transform the Borderlands universe from something I wasn't really interested in to something I wanted to further explore. It made me want to replay Borderlands 2 because of how interesting the universe feels now. For fans of Telltale games, regardless if you played any Borderlands game before, you can hop into the new episodic series and understand almost everything that's going on. In some ways, this game is unlike The Wolf Among Us and The Walking Dead. Instead of depressing melodrama and disgusting violence, Tales from the Borderlands is an adventure that is over the top ridiculous and hilarious. Pull out the barrel! I'll draw your blood! Meat buddies right in the death train! and also has disgusting violence. Ooh, got quiet all of a sudden. Hi. Kill them all! The game is very funny and jokes more often hit the miss. Although the Borderlands humor is more of an adapted taste, fans of the series will laugh their asses off. Newcomers may need an hour or two to adjust to the over-the-top and shocking content the game provides. Oh, Eric? Oh, is that you? Wait, 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 what is this? Is, is this real or is this, a, is this a joke? Oh, this is real, real! Wait, 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 that's not Eric. The dual protagonist thing the game is doing is effective and refreshing. Exploring the same scenarios and confrontations from two alternate sides creates some very interesting anomalies, bringing out the skepticism from everyone who's going to play this game. Sometimes your main characters will flat out lie about the events they're describing. It's even more interesting when you're not sure which of the two characters are telling the lies. <laughs> oh, you are a delight. But on to business. I propose that we form an alliance for the return of the funds. Hmm, capital. <laughs> Re really? Is that what you're going with? Because I remember it a little differently. <laughs> what Telltale is best known for is their ability to create interesting wide cast of characters, and Tales from the Borderlands is no exception. 
Some characters are nerdy, mischievous, wise, quirky, and because this game takes place in the Borderlands universe, it's no surprise that there are a multitude of characters that are either mentally fucked up, or just straight up dicks. The upside though is that every character is likable and memorable thanks to Telltale's excellent script writing. The dialogue is some of the best in video games in general, and each character has their own distinct style of speech that represent their character. Characters are further brought to life because of the terrific cast of voice actors. The world's sexiest voice actor of all time, Troy Baker, plays one of the playable characters in the game, alongside the equally talented Laura Bailey. The supporting cast is also equally up to par with performances from Chris Harwick as Vaughn, Patrick Wormington as Vasquez, who also plays Joe from Family Guy, and another one of my personal favorites, Nolan North. I can't remember, but I think I teared up in the scene where actors Troy Baker and Nolan North had a conversation together. It was a once in a lifetime moment. <laughs> Visually, the mix between Telltale's cell shaded art styles and Borderlands' cell shaded art style looks like the two games were made for each other. And to note, this game was being reviewed on the PlayStation 4, so I have no idea how the game runs on the PS3, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PC, Android, or any of the iOS devices. The game looks sharp and the colors are so bright my box of Crayola crayons for grade 3 got jealous and they ran away from me. It runs much, much better than any game Telltale has ever made previously. While there are occasional stutters in the frame rate, it's nowhere near as constant as their past games. This is not only the best looking Telltale game ever, it is also the best looking Borderlands game to date. And the music. The mixture of cowboy western guitarists and the typical Borderlands music helped craft a very memorable score. Those of you who are expecting first person Borderlands action mixed with the mass amounts of loot in the small RPG system will be severely disappointed. Telltale fans will know just what to expect though. There are two different types of gameplay scenarios in this. Dialogue options and the point and click puzzle parts. Weirdly enough, there weren't that many dialogue sections in the game. And I'm not just talking about the big choices, just there just weren't that many options to speak. The first episode is so tightly set up for the rest of the series that I guess they found little room for dialogue sections, which is pretty disappointing considering when the interesting characters are conversing the conversation, you're just there to watch. And even the major choices that feel like they really matter, don't. All major choices of the game differ for a whole two seconds, and the path just continues the same. Now I know The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us was like this, but in those games the choice is made and it alters the context of the whole story. Tales from the Borderlands, however, doesn't change the outcome or the characterization behind your character's decision. Without spoiling anything, there was a choice near the end that asked if you wanted to shoot and kill a specific character, or if you want to let this person go. Even before making the decision, I knew exactly what would happen to this character, regardless if I reacted to the situation or not. And this happens for the duration of the game, disregarding one specific dilemma. Like The Wolf Among Us, however, there were many instances in which both characters' personalities and methods could be altered depending on your choices. The character Rise is still Rise regardless of what you do, but there are certain things you could change about him through dialogue that make him feel like your own. Is Rise a quirky, baffling idiot like his best friend? Or does he act like Handsome Jack to get what he wants? Fiona is the same too. Is she willing to do whatever it takes to get out of a situation? Or does her heart and moral compass affect her decisions? This is all up to you and it helps make the experience feel much more personal. There are also a couple scenarios where I had the option to lie to the person in front of me. And I don't mean saying a measly little lie and move on, I mean multiple dialogue options if you just bullshitting your heart out. Coming out successful from an intricate lie is one of the most satisfying feelings the game can give you. The game shows that sometimes words are more powerful than the bullets, which is pretty ironic considering that this is Borderlands. Then there are the point and click sections, which are almost non-existent at this point. There are no traditional puzzles in Tales from the Borderlands, but this actually enhances the experience by keeping the pace going and by directing all of your attention to the story. The parts that you are in control of your movement of the character are minimum, but I didn't mind this. Trying to keep things fresh, Telltale added a little gameplay tweak to each of the main characters. Rise has a cybernetic eye that gives very specific details about certain objects that you look at. You can use this every time your controller rises movements. And while it doesn't change the actual game that much, it provides insight that makes the Borderlands universe feel much more richer than it actually is. Fiona, on the other hand, has the ability to collect money and use it in certain situations. 
The game promises that money can get you things that words can't. But sorry to say, money doesn't change the game at all. The situations where spending money is an option isn't necessary. Anything I can do with money, I can also do with words. And why does the game want you to save your money and then ask you which mask you want to buy solely for cosmetic purposes? Hopefully future episodes use the currency system to its full potential, or at least make it change the game slightly. Then there are the high-octane, tightly scripted action sequences that utilize quick-time button prop swipes of the stick and very quick reflexes, and the lack of frame rate drop screen tearing slowdown time between cutscenes compared to past games even further highlight how awesome the action sequences are. The episode takes around 2 hours to complete, which is actually much longer than other episodes in past Telltale games. You could replay the episode and see the altered effects for different choices, but they're not as drastic as you think they are. Seems like Telltale could tackle any series out there and make it more interesting than it actually is. Zero Sum shows that Telltale also makes the best pilot episodes in any medium. Replacing the tense drama of past games and going back to their comedic roots, episode 1 is hilarious, intriguing, and compelling all at once. And while the choices sometimes feel unnecessary, the game's two very unreliable protagonists create some fine examples of storytelling, further brought to life with talented voice actors and top tier quality of interesting characters. You're, you're really cool. <laughs> I just, I wanted you to know. Telltale's Tales from the Borderlands Episode 1 Zero Sum receives an 8.75 out of 10. It's right now. Alright? Are you ready? All right. Here we go! Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, wait, wait. Wait. Alright, ready? Three, two, one, get into roll. Okay. Okay. You ready? Yep. Okay. And now. Telltale just came out with a new game today. Oh, really? It's an adaptation. Oh, f***! I didn't finish my f***ing line! Do <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Alright, let's go. Okay. Thank you for watching Bathroom Gamers. Be sure to subscribe for future video reviews for all the new video games. Our future videos include the remaining episodes from Tales from the Borderlands, Far Cry 4, Telltale's Episode 1 for Game of Thrones, Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U, and Little Big Planet 3. If you have any suggestions for future videos or want to let me know what you think of episode 1 of this new adventure, be sure to comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching, and stay fresh.